Hi everyone, I'm Swathi Pandey. I'm online editor for Zocalo Public Square. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm here with Chris Mooney. He's a contributing editor of Science Progress and author of the New York Times bestseller, The Republican War on Science. He's also a contributing writer to many publications, including Wire, Slate, and The American Prospect. Thanks for joining us today. We're here to talk about his new book, Unscientific America, How Scientific Illiteracy Threatens Our Future. Good to be here. So tell me, as a journalist, how did you first get interested in writing about science? Well, I, I wanted to be a writer first. I'm a college English major, and that was that was what I wanted to do. But it turns out that I have science in the family. Uh, my grandfather was an evolutionary biologist who was uh, very inspirational as a kid. The sort of dry, humorous, uh, scientist way of life. Uh, none of it means anything, but isn't it funny? Sort of, <laughs> it kind of rubbed off on me. So, uh, so, so I kind of gravitated toward the material that way. So as I became a political reporter at the American Prospect magazine, I was then able to actually cover a lot of scientific topics uh, in a political context, which was something that not a lot of people were doing. And tell me how you paired up with your co-author and sort of what the argument you seek to make and why it was good to work with a scientist. So it was excellent to work with a scientist. And, uh, I was one of the earlier of the science bloggers. Mm -hmm. 2003 I started doing it and now there's, there's a ton of them but I was, I was early on. And so by about 2007 I was getting really tired of it. And uh, I was going on a vacation. I was going to throw away my computer for a week. And so I needed someone to guest blog. And I knew Cheryl through an acquaintance, and she wanted to do it. I said, "Fine." I come back from the trip to Italy, and uh, wow, she's totally popular. You know, like everybody likes her. So I'm like, "You need to stay because I'm tired of blogging." And actually, and she got me back into it again. Mm -hmm. So we then collaborated on many other things because we're like every day writing on the same website, and so much happens. Um, so we collaborated on an initiative called Science Debate 2008. Uh, which we helped to co-found with some other people to try to get the presidential candidates to talk about science. It turned out to be very successful except in its goal, which was to get the presidential candidates to talk about science. But, but we rallied a lot of people and that was why it was successful. And then the book was just sort of a natural outgrowth mm -hmm. of that. Great. And what's your primary argument? Yeah. And, and who's to blame? <laughs> who's to blame? Everybody's to blame. It's like <laughs> we're shooting in six directions. Um, but the primary argument is that there's a large disconnect between the world of science in America, on the one hand, and everybody else. And it's a damaging disconnect, and it's probably getting worse, and damaging for policy and for the future. Because science drives the economy, science underlies decision-making in key areas like climate change, uh, stem cells, and many other bioethics issues, what have you. So if people aren't attuned to science, if politicians aren't attuned to it, if the society isn't attuned to it, then we run great risk. That's the argument. Uh, who's the blame for the gap? Well, since it's a gap, and this is what some people like about the book and some people hate about the book, is that uh, if there's a gap, then both sides are to blame. And that's the thing about it. You could say, those people over there need to come across the divide toward me. Or you could say, there's a divide, I should try to go towards those people over there. And both are true. So the scientists are partly to blame. They have their norms, their behaviors that actually keep them, keep them apart from people who aren't scientists. And then everybody else really ought to be more attuned because it matters. To be, because to be a good citizen, you have to know something about science today. Was there a point in time in American history where science was more popular and mm -hmm. why? Were scientists yeah. more public figures or, or was it something else? Absolutely there was. Um, I'm think, I think that not everybody even then probably you know, knew all the facts. But, um, but we do know that science was at the center of the American agenda at a particular time. And that is the period following the Soviet launch of Sputnik where we, we were all were terrified that we were behind our greatest rival. And the period starting there and going through the sort of the great days of the space race up to probably uh, 69 and landing on the moon and that kind of stuff where America said, we're going to rally behind science, we're going to invest in it, we're going to bring it into government, we are going to create a lot of careers and research, we're going to reshape science education, all that, we did all that. Um, and it was, it was the national agenda of the moment. There's never been a period since where science was so prominent to what we're trying to achieve. What do we need to make that happen today? Gotcha. Do we need an outside threat? Yes, threat? that's what I hear a lot of, and I don't want to, you know, call for another Cold War so that we can then have science, mm -hmm. you know. Science lost its way after the Cold War. It lost its way for a lot of reasons, but it was so closely tied uh, to the mission we'd adopted during the Cold War that when the Cold War ended, it was hard to justify a lot of, a lot of research. Uh, so no, I think we need a new challenge. And a lot of people have said it's energy. 
the president probably agrees with that. The problem is, uh, I don't see us mobilizing in anything like the way, you know, we haven't, you know, been pushed, I guess, in the way that we were then. An earlier book of yours focused on Republicans yes. and how they treat science. How is the new administration doing? Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? It's totally the flip side, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're actually setting out deliberately. Many people have criticized the Bush administration, who I used as sources, are now running the government. In fact, a lot of them are heads of various parts of the government. So, so it's a complete flip. So they're deliberately trying to root out the kind of misbehavior that happened in the Bush administration. Plus, they flipped policy positions on all of the issues that were the most contentious, stem cells, global warming, etc. So it's a completely different game. And so we have to wonder, out what, what are they going to do wrong? <laughs> because so far, they're reversing everything that was done wrong. But inevitably, there probably will be some controversies. Mr. Mooney, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, the book is Unscientific America, How Scientific Illiteracy Threatens Our Future.